Spirit of the living God, I surrender myself unto you. I am nobody without you. Holy Spirit, I pray tonight that I will disappear completely, that you will appear. I pray tonight that I will decrease, but you will increase. In the mighty name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, you know it and you know it, that this is very difficult for me. But Lord, I pray, Spirit of the living God, just have your way. Just do it the way you want to do it. In the mighty name of Jesus, that at the end of the day, the teacher and the learner, none will be blamed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Redeemer. Oh, begin with us. Go through it with us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we be gloriously seated in his presence? Please let us move to the front. Let us move to the front. You will not be a backbencher in Jesus' name. Your portion will always be in the front. Tonight, uh, it is not by design. Let me put it this way, that it is not by human design because I believe it's by the design of the Holy Spirit, that for a time now, uh, we have been learning about, we have been learning about preparation for his coming. On Sunday, our uh, uh, deacon that took the opening prayer prayed passionately about heaven, preparation for heaven. The fresh anointing was about the same. The message pointed us to the same. Praise the Lord. All of this is for a purpose. God is not a waster of resources. He would not be putting all of this together for us if there is no need for it. We really need to prepare. And what other book in the Bible really, really point us to practical preparation other than the book of Hebrews? Practical preparations. Praise the Lord. The, tonight, we will be doing an exposition into the book of Hebrews to the glory and praise of his name as he permits us to go. The Holy Spirit will open us up to this wonderful book. And I need us to still go back and make sure we read this book of Hebrews over and over again. Because herein lies the message of the end time. Amen. Amen. This book of Hebrews talk about the supremacy of our Lord Jesus Christ in everything. There is no other book that is so occupied with everything, the, the supremacy of the Lord Jesus Christ, the supremacy of his work, more than this book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews made a contrast between the old and the new. It made us to understand clearly that if the old were good enough, there would be no cause for the new. And this book 
expanded to us that the new is better than the old. Praise the Lord. That in the new, you have a better hope. You have a better rest. You have a better sacrifice, a better covenant. A better country, the new Jerusalem. And a better restoration. What else do we need to hear? This book was written by an unknown author to Christians, not to Muslims. To people who had given their lives to Christ like you and I, who had believed. But the author perceived that these people, though they have given their lives to Christ, though they are believers, they are not standing well. They are on the verge of going back. Amen. Amen. Just like many of us are on the verge of going back, even though it's not known to us. This book addresses both the doctrine and the duty of Christians. And it lays a solid foundation for our faith. Praise the Lord. Uh, the book of Hebrews is divided into three parts. Praise the Lord. It's profounded three basic solid truths and gave us six warnings. Amen. Three basic truths. Praise the Lord. How many parts? How many parts? Three. Somebody says six. That shows who is listening and who is not listening. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Divided into three parts and gave us six warnings. Amen. So tonight we are going to look at the three parts, the three truths, the six warnings. And uh, I trust the Holy Spirit to teach us, to help us. The book of Hebrews had always been, I don't know why, a book that I before now find very, very difficult to really understand completely until this opportunity to really look at it. We said it presents three basic solid truths. Amen. Uh, truth number one is that the Lord Jesus Christ is the uttermost, is the superior. The book is, the truth number one is that the book is directed towards helping to change the ways we think and act. It is directed towards creating new paradigms for ourselves. The first truth I said is directed towards helping us as Christians that is the truth in this world is that Hebrews is directed towards helping us to change the way we think and act. Praise the Lord. The second truth is that our Lord Jesus Christ is not only a wonderful Savior but a superior leader. Amen. We are followers. We have a superior leader. So this book presents a superior leader.
that we as followers need to follow. Praise the Lord. And truth number three is that vision drives faith. Amen. Truth number three, we need a compelling vision, a compelling vision to drive our faith. Without a vision, we are lost. Chapter 11 spoke about patriarchs of faith. They lived by faith and were energized by a vision. Amen. So the whole of this, the book, communicates vision and a preferred future. Brethren, your vision determines your future. If you cannot see it, you cannot have it. Amen? Is that right? If you cannot see it, you cannot have it. Yes. So, the book is to guide us, and that's what it's going to do for us tonight, to changing our thoughts and our actions. Two, it presented our superior leader for us as followers to follow. And three, it teaches that we need a vision to drive our faith. We need faith, but our, vi our faith must be backed up by a vision. Praise the Lord. Uh, the book we said is divided into three parts. Amen. Three sections. The first section talks about the superiority of Christ's person. The superiority of his person. When you look at chapters 1 to 4. The second section talks about the superiority of Christ's work. Chapters 4 to 10. And the third discusses the superiority of the Christian lifestyle verses 10 to 13. This book has 13 chapters. So the first four dealt with the superiority of the Lord Jesus Christ as the person is possible. The next one, four to 10, speak to the superiority of his work and 10 to 13, speak to the superiority of the Christian lifestyle. Amen. Uh, before we go into the scripture, have I been able to lay a foundation for you? And we said it has six warnings. The first warning, you and I are warned against neglecting this great salvation that the Lord Jesus Christ had brought to us. The second warning, we were warned against having an evil heart of unbelief. The third warning, we were warned against spiritual laziness and slothfulness. Hmm. The fourth warning, we were warned against the need to be committed to him. We were warned against lack of commitment. We need to be committed. And uh, warning number five, or what, what number? We were warned against sinning willfully and drawing back. And number six, we want against weariness and bitterness. Finally, finally, we want against 
adultery, covetousness, and lack of hospitality. Praise the Lord. So, how many truths do we have? Yes? Hello? How many truths? Three. Yeah, God bless you. Truth number one. Yes, the truth of this word is to change the way we think and we act. Truth number two. Thank you, ma'am. Jesus is presented as our superior leader, worthy of emulation, of following. We are supposed to be following him. And truth number three. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. A compelling vision to drive our faith. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And how many sections or how many parts is this do we have here? This is divided into how many how many sections? Hello? Three. Yes, sir. Section number one. God bless you, sir. The superiority of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two. The superiority of his works. And number three. God bless you, man. The superiority of the Christian lifestyle. Amen. Once it's not in our book that we can quickly look into it, we keep quiet. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We are here for a purpose. I know as many that are seated here this evening, you are here for an encounter. You are here for a purpose. You did not come by accident. God brought you because there's something he wants you to hear. There's something he wants to correct. There's more, something he wants to add. There's something he wants to subtract. And all that he means to do tonight, he will do in your life in Jesus' name. Whether you like it or not. Whether you give him permission to do it or not. Tonight he will do what he has to do in your life. Because of course it's his own anyway. Praise the Lord. Now let's turn to uh, outline now. Having laid that foundation, uh, let's look at the book of Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. If you are willing to read, let me see your hand up. Okay, ma'am. Uh, sir. Could you please take uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 5 to 14 for us? 1 to 4. Praise the Lord. Remember we said uh, the first section is talking about the superiority of his person. Our Lord Jesus Christ is superior even to the angels. The Bible says there that to whom has God said 
that you are my son. That scripture we read talked about the Lord Jesus Christ being appointed as heir over all things. All things. Through whom also he made the works. He is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the power of his word. He is superior to every situation, superior to every circumstances, superior to whatever you might be going through, superior high and above principalities and powers. He is above everything you can think of. Just think about it. What is it that is going on in your mind or in your life, in your, in your job, in your... He is superior. He is above all. The Bible says he opposed all things by the power of his word. Amen. Meaning that we will be undoing ourselves if we refuse to study the word. All things, all situations, all circumstances are being what? Upheld by, by what? His word. The power of his word. So whatever is it you are going through, it can, that solution can only come through the power of his word. Amen. Psalm 5 to 14. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, uh -huh. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he said, Who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? Mm -hmm. But unto the son he said, Thou throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even that God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Verse 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of their hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. They all shall wax old, as dwelt a garment. And as a vesture shall they fold them up, and they shall be changed. For thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right side, on my right hand, until I make thy enemies their footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Praise the Lord. The book of Hebrews is referring to the Old Testament. Where we read, brought out scriptures from the Old Testament to back up the superiority of his person. Praise the Lord. Verse 5 there was quoted from uh, the book of Deuteronomy. If we look at, let's look at uh, Psalm 2 verse 7. Sorry, let's look at Psalm 2 verse 7. Somebody, Psalm 2 verse 7. Praise the Lord. The Lord has said unto me this day, you are my son, this day have I begotten thee. And look at Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 5. And it says, and again, let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 14. We are trying to establish the supremacy of Christ over all situations and circumstances. Now, we said the book, this book of Hebrews drew a, a, a clear demarcation between the old and the new. And it says if the old were to be good enough, there would not be need for the new. And it spoke that the new 
is better than the old. We said in the new, you have a better covenant. You have a better hope. You have a better rest. A better sacrifice. A better country. Everything concerning the new is better. Praise the Lord. Are we there? Yeah, Second Samuel 7 and 14. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. That's the big part of uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 5. Everything here was quoted from the Old Testament. Trying to point us to the fact that the Old Testament was talking about the new. Establishing the supremacy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Deuteronomy 32 and verse 43. Sound of God, yes, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 43. Praise the Lord. The, 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 the Deuteronomy he there is referring to, uh, but when he again brings the first one into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And the angel says, Psalm 104, verse 4. And the angel says, Yes, Psalm 104, verse 4. Who maketh his angels spirit and his ministers a flaming fire? That is establishing that we have a better covenant, a better hope, a better restoration, a better country, a better rest. In the name as against the old. Amen. Uh, who is going to take Hebrews chapter 2 for us? And we are going to the, our first one. Hebrews chapter 2, if you are reading 1 to 4. Yes, ma'am, God bless you. Uh, another person, Hebrews chapter 2, uh, 5 to 10. Hebrews chapter 2, 5 to 10. God bless you, man. Hebrews chapter 2, 11 to 18. Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. Okay. 1 to 4. Hebrews 2, 1 to 4. And therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Please listen. You need to get, give the more earnest heed, not ordinary heed. God is not a waster of words. He could have said you need to give heed. But it says earnest heed. What is the meaning of earnest? What is the meaning of earnest? Hello? Hello? What is the meaning of earnest? Quick, quick, don't delay to give attention to this. It's not something you can say, okay, tomorrow I will think about it. It says give earnest, quick, speedy attention, immediate attention. That's what it's saying. Immediate, speedy, quick attention to this warning. It is very important. So you are making it through. Continue, man. To the things which we have heard, this is at any time we should let them speak. Praise the Lord. How many things have we heard? Just on Sunday alone, fresh anointing, prepare.
prayer. The Lord is coming. Open prayer, prepare. The message, prepare. You must not be devoid of Christ. Prepare. He says, uh, shortage of Christ. When you are short of Christ, your life is short. Our lives will not be short in Jesus' name. And the, Bible, and the Bible is not telling us, give endless heed to everything you've been hearing. So it's not possible for any of us to tell here to say, I have never heard. That's what he's saying. That I am warning you now, you can't say I have not heard. It says before, he sent his prophets. Perhaps you feel that the prophets are not good enough. They probably can't speak good English. They don't, they, they are not educated, not learned. You probably feel that they are, these ones are not good enough. Okay, then, he sent his son. Who else do you want him to send? Praise the Lord. Who else do you want him to send? So that's what they say. I have sent everyone I can send. I have taught everything I can teach you. When they say you are not paying tax, you cannot say because I have never heard about it. Uh, you are not giving off, you cannot say no. Uh, don't commit adultery. There is nothing you can say I have not heard. He said, give earnest heed to those things you have heard. Lest they sleep out of your heart, out of your mind. Because when they sleep, you forget. And you will begin to work against them, which is dangerous. The Lord will help us. Yes, ma'am. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, uh -huh. and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of the word, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that had him? For God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. Praise the Lord. Say the first warning. What is the first warning? Hello? What is the first warning? It says, give earnest heed to every word you have heard, lest it sleep out of your heart and you neglect of the, the, the great, this great salvation. And it says, if even angels do not escape punishment, who are you? Praise the Lord. How shall we escape? If even angels cannot escape it, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. 5 to 10. What excuse do you have? The Bible says he has given us all that pertains to life and godliness. Everything we need. He said he did not even put this word under subjection of the angels. Amen. Can you imagine? Not even the angels can say yes, 
I have authority. Yes, this this word is under my subjection. Who did he give authority? Praise God, Hashema. Man, you and I. So tell me what excuse do we have? If he respects us even more than the angels, and he has put everything under our subjection. So it is the devil, it's the bloody lie. It is you. He has put everything under our subjection. Giving us power and authority over sin. So we have no excuse. He even made the Lord Jesus Christ the captain of our salvation a little lower than the angels. When he died on the cross, because the angels did not die on the cross, and praise God, he set him, he crowned him with glory and with honor. The same thing he did for you and I. He set us over the works of his hands. He gives everything, on, put everything in subjection under our feet so that we do not have any, yes, so that we do not have any excuse. He has given us all, not so, that pertains unto life and godliness. He has given us prophets. He has given us teachers. He has given us the word. He has given us this, his son. He has given us everything we need to live right. He says, I am going to prepare a place. He had prepared a place already. Praise the Lord. And God is not a waster. He doesn't want where his, his preparation, he doesn't want his preparation to go to waste. After he had prepared that, he now is not, he not prepared you and I for where he had prepared for us. So we have no excuse. The Lord will help us to heed that warning in Jesus' name. Yes. Second warning, yes. Calling us that is not common. He himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, has gone through everything we are going through. He said he did not take on the form of the angels, meaning that he had the choice. But he took on the form of man, of the seed of Abraham. <coughs> like we said, we said he is our superior leader. And that he had come, he had even come. He died so that he can destroy the power of death. And so that he can deliver as many of us. 
Like if they put a knife to you and say, hey, deny the Lord Jesus Christ, or else you will die. He says he had destroyed the fear of death. And many of us, he said, because he knows, many of us are a whole lifetime subject to fear of death. If, as we were teaching now, if we were teaching about the enemy, and we say, guys, let us pray. Ah, every witch in your house that want to kill you, die. Oh my God. Those, they won't have to listen in all the countries around to hear our voice. Because we are afraid of death. Meanwhile, he said he had delivered us from the fear of death. He had destroyed the power of death. That is why he went right into the grave. He collected all the keys from the devil. Bishop Oyebo says the kingdom, this world, operates on keys. All of the keys the Lord Jesus Christ has collected. And where are the keys? Where are the keys? Praise the Lord. Where are the keys? Some people are, don't, don't even know. Yes? We have it. I don't know if whether you, know, you have it or you don't have it. I have it. He had gone, he had collected all the keys. The keys of prosperity. He had given it unto you. He says, for this reason, he made himself poor. So that out of his poverty, you and I can be rich. The, the key to good health, he has given it unto you. He says, by his stripes, you are healed. He has given you the keys, every key that you need. I think I have said it here before that a couple was fighting one day, and I was uh, trying to mediate and say, stop it and all that. And the, the wife had a big stature somehow. And the husband told me, don't mind, don't mind her. Uh, I don't understand how to interpret that. But, um, <laughs> yes, thank you. Again, you cannot open the door by your stature. It is key. You can't say because I'm big and you get to the door and understand. It won't open. You need a key. Praise the Lord. <laughs> So it does not matter how great thing it but the problem is it cannot open the door if you have the key. You have the key. It will only come in if you open for him. That is what the Bible is telling you. It doesn't matter. You have the keys. It depends on how you use it. Uh, many of us have our keys. Please, sir, if you keep your key in your pocket, and you get to the entrance of your door. Will the door open for you? After all, you have the key. It's in your pocket. It will open. <laughs> Even if you have the door, you still have to press it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is important we have the keys. Do not say, take heed. Do not lose sight of the keys that I have given you. Take heed. Do not allow my words to go in vain. It is possible for him to take on the form of angels. He did not. But he took on the form of you and I. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, let us look at Hebrews chapter 3. Uh, let's read verses 7. Somebody who is taking Hebrews chapter 3 for us. Uh, uh, because of our time, even though I really want us to read all of this, but... Uh, uh, because of our time, Ma, please um, just start from seven. Therefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today, today if ye will hear his voice, adding not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Praise the Lord. 
How many of us on that stand or we have heard it before what happened to them in the wilderness? How many of us? You don't know what happened in the wilderness. If you don't know what happened in the wilderness, so that we can explain it to you, there's no shame about it. Raise up your hand. You don't know what happened in the wilderness. God bless you. Ah, uh, the children of God in Israel were taken from Egypt, delivered, and the Lord was taking them to the promised land. But when they got to the wilderness, they provoked God. They forgot all the wonders that he had done. They distrusted him. They turned against him. And he swore in his heart that they will not see the promised land. And all of those generations were destroyed. Not one of them. All of them were destroyed. Except for two that confessed their trust in God. That was what happened in the wilderness. They were destroyed because of disobedience. Because of lack of trust. Because they turned against God. And now we are having the same warning. Meaning that, remember the first warning he told us. He said, if he did not spare the angels, who are you that he will not, he will not spare you? So, if we turn against God, hurricane upon hurricane, tsunami, tornado, it doesn't cost him anything to destroy the whole world. Were it not the fact that he is a covenant keeping God, that he has said he will not destroy the world with water again. It's enough to just use the, uh, any of these hurricanes. Look at the way the hurricanes are uh, have a cave. He says, I can't do this alone. He called uh, Ima. He said, Ima, come and eat your own. No. There's plenty shop here. Ima eats, finish. So he said, ah, ah, Maria, ah, you are still there. Come and eat. Ah. <laughs> plenty food. It doesn't cost a God anything, does it them all? Because of what? Because of disobedience. So he's warning us against having an evil heart of unbelief. Know whom you have believed. Trust him. He is able to do exactly above that which you can think or even imagine. He who brings to, uh, to conception. The Bible says, will he not bring to delivery? He who made mouth. Is it too much for him to feed that mouth? He who made the way for visa for you. Many people, I know that that's not them say. God, they have this and they have no money for, for flights. He was still looking for money for flights when everything, when the visa lapsed. In that day of uh, lottery, I know of somebody close that I know very well that has got the visa, the visa lottery. He has nobody to come to. They said address. It's only address and he doesn't have it. Doesn't have address. You, you have visa. You have address. You have money. Ah. Praise the Lord. You bought the plane. No plane crash. If he had brought you here, is it not big enough to sustain you? He who says, wherever the son of your fish shall touch and will give unto you, is it not faithful enough? Then be careful so that you will not face destruction simply because of unbelief. Sit down, my dear sister. God bless you. Let's go to our third morning. Hebrews chapter 5. 
Who is going to read? Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Uh, could you please begin from verse 11 for me? Uh, Hebrews chapter 5. Of yeah. whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. Mm. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, mm. you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. Not you. Continue, please. Continue. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. Mm. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. Please for he is a babe. Mm. Yes, continue. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Praise the Lord. Whatever you don't use, what happens? You lose. It says, be careful of laziness. It's like the story of a boy that the said traveled. And because he had been a wayward boy, the pastor father had done everything. He had refused to give his life to Christ. And he now said, okay, I want to go and study abroad. He got uh, admission. The father said, okay, go. What about uh, accommodation? What about uh, uh, whatever? What about uh, school fees? Everything. The, Bible, the father said, no problems. On the day he was going, said the Bible, the father, the pastor father gave him a Bible. He said, is this man crazy? Is it Bible that I will eat? Is it Bible that I will use to pay and pay school fees? The father said, everything you need is in that book. So he took the, the, game, the father gave him his ticket and the Bible. He took the Bible, he threw the Bible aside. After he has suffered seriously, like the prodigal son, he remembered what his stupid father, in court, gave him. Then he said, let me go and carry this. This man doesn't know anything other than Bible. The check that we turn his life around is in that Bible. <laughs> but he refused to open it. That is many of us. The check that we solve our problem is here. God had put it inside the small envelope, put it inside the Bible and wrap up the Bible and say, this is a gift to you. And I say, upon all of this now. I watched a movie too that a woman was doing, celebrating her 50th birthday. And the only gift the husband gave him was the Bible. And he teared up seriously. Ah, uh ah. -uh. The, and the, the, the millionaire husband. Not no house, no key to car, Bible. What do I want to do with Bible? He divorced. The thing became problem. She divorced the man. Everybody went their different ways, suffered and all of that. The man was given was sick. He, she refused to go and see the man until the man died. Years after, he opened the Bible and saw that there is a will. Wherein the husband had willed every property he has to, to her inside the Bible. That was when she not started crying. Too late. The man is dead already. Everything is scattered. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. He's warning us. He said, this is the warning the Lord is giving us. Warning us against laziness and slothfulness. Say, when you need to be eating strong meat, you are still taking milk. Please, how many of us will be very happy when your 10 year old is still using diaper and still taking formula? <laughs> eh? That is just telling you, talk less 60. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We will not be an imbecile. Many of us are spiritual imbeciles. 
is warning us be careful, beware of laziness and slowfulness. Because he said they miss it because they cannot exercise their brain. Those who exercise, it's only by exercise that you can get it. Yes, warning number four. Chapter six. Who is taking that for us? Yes, ma'am. Hebrews chapter six. Please begin to read from verse one. Therefore, having the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Now laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism and of the laying of, on, of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permits. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have, and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made, and were made part, partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come. If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. Mm -hmm. Seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We will not put Christ to an open shame in Jesus' name. Amen. He's talking about you and I. He said, It is impossible. For those who are enlightened, how many of us here are not enlightened? Eh? We are not enlightened. We can hear, right? We understand simple English. Not everybody is like me, that did not go to school. We are enlightened. Many of us, we have read 10, 10 books. Okay? It says, we have tested the heavenly gifts. Please, if you are seated here and you have never tested Christ, you can say test and see that the Lord is good. You have not tested that heavenly gift, the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not tested it. So nothing good had ever come out of him. Amen? Amen. Nobody. Okay? And he says, you are a partaker of the Holy Spirit. Many of us can speak in tongues more than even the Holy Spirit itself. <laughs> when you begin your papara, popo, re, keke, you have tasted everything. And yet, you are nailing the Lord Jesus Christ to the cross every day. With everything you do against him, you are doing what? Nailing him to the cross and putting him to an open shame. Don't you know that when they say, ah, uh, ah, uh, and she calls herself a Christian. That's an open shame. That shame is not yours. It is Christ. You are putting Christ to shame. Ah, ah. I think they said Christians don't. Why is this person doing this? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We will not put Christ to shame. Amen. That is our third warning. Praise the Lord. Uh, fourth, that's our, our fourth warning. Yes. We must not, we are going to put, the, put Christ to shame. Get committed. Know who you have believed. And get committed. Praise the Lord. Our fifth warning. Yes. Uh, let us go into Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Yes, by show of hand. Who is helping? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Could you please begin from verse 26? For if we say we fully, after that we have received the 
knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sin. Praise the Lord. That's it. That's but, it. Thank you, Sman. That's it. If we willfully go into sin after we have received the Lord Jesus Christ, after we have known, after we have the knowledge, remember what we said we are doing. Willfully nailing him to the cross, willfully pulling him to shame. He says there's no other sacrifice. There's no other sacrifice. But what? What is what is there? Please take 27 so that we know there's no sacrifice. But what is available for, for that person? But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and of a very, very indignation which shall devour the adversary. Praise the Lord. I pray that we will not set up ourselves as the adversary of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said there's no sacrifice. What is available is the fire to devour adversaries. Warning number six, chapter 12. Dickness uh, Felicia. Verse 4. You can begin from 3. For consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Fine. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, mm. my son. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, mm -hmm. nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth is chastening, mm -hmm. and scourged every son whom he received. Praise the Lord. Why are we seated here this evening? It is because the Lord loves us. He does not want us to miss his provision for us. That's why he is repeating this warnings to us again tonight i remember uh we one of our, our, our visiting pastors that stayed with us for quite some time preached about not fighting with god said do not fight with god that is the warning that the Lord is giving us, warning us against bitterness. Bitterness not against man, but against Christ. When you consider him who endured such hostility from sinners, against himself, just because of you, what have you done? You have not resisted to bloodshed. Striving against sin. Meaning that when you are striving against sin, you must resist to the point of bloodshed. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord. The Lord is, is chastening us tonight. He's telling us, do not cast away your trust. He's warning us, against slothfulness, is warning us, against sin, is warning us, against nailing him to the cross a second time, the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And finally, let us look at chapter 13. Let brotherly love continue. Amen. Amen. Let brotherly love continue. The whole of chapter 13 is talking about to us about the supremacy of our lifestyle, Christian lifestyle. This is what a Christian lifestyle should be patterned after. Let brotherly love continue. 
do not forget to entertain strangers. But by doing so, for, for by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if changed with them. That is empathy. Feel what that other person is feeling as if you are in the same shoe with that person. Remember those who are mistreated. Since you yourself are in the body also. Marriage is honorable among all and the bed on the fight. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Let your conduct be with that conversiousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Shall we rise to our feet? Any questions? Any addition or omission? He who has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He who has boldly said, the Lord is my helper. So you can boldly say, because he has said, I will never leave nor forsake you. So, so we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So what is your fear? Praise the Lord. Any questions? Any addition, any omission, any subtraction, any multiplication? Praise the Lord. Let us begin to talk to God. You have my permission. Just have your way. Lord, you have my permission. Have your way. Whatsoever you need to remove, Father, from my life. Hey, Daddy, remove it. Am I grieving you in any way? Am I nailing you to the cross in any way? 